Welcome everybody. Welcome to Invest Ask, your number one channel for cryptocurrency investing, daily news, updates and forecasts. My name is Syed and in this short video, I'm going to talk about the frequently asked questions about SafeMoon. And these are pretty important. These are the top 10 frequently asked questions that you're about to take a look at and hopefully it is going to clear up majority of the questions or the common questions that the community is asking or people are asking regarding safe moon and we know that safe moon is the most exponentially growing crypto the most viral crypto on this planet and of course with huge huge gains so let's dive right in and take a look at the frequently asked questions this is directly from the safe moon team itself so with the first question how do I buy safe moon so of course as of the time of writing you can buy safe moon through pancake swap bitmart whitebit and of course there are other exchanges as well uh, derivative exchanges or spot exchanges for example it could be zbg gate.io hotbit and so on safe moon the next question is why is it so difficult to buy safe moon SafeMoon was created, of course, in March 2021, which is a little over two and a half months or so. So getting on exchanges is more of a process rather than an event. Additionally, there is some work that exchanges may have to implement on their side in order to play nicely with SafeMoon's unique tokenomics. Perfect. Question number three. Why is my account slowly increasing every time I refresh my wallet? Here's the answer. You are receiving reflections from transactions. So if you need to understand more on reflections, you can navigate to the SafeMoon white paper to learn more about how the protocol works and what makes it so exciting and unique. Next question. Why is the price between exchange A and exchange B so different? Here's the answer. Remember that every time SafeMoon is traded there is a 10% tax where 5% of all trades are redistributed to holders and 5% of all trades are auto locked inside liquidity providers or burn this means that arbitrage trades between exchanges are expensive and takes time so there may be significant price fluctuations in rare events the Binance smart chain infrastructure becomes heavily strained making it difficult for one or more exchanges to use arbitrage trades to level out the price between exchanges or an exchange could be experiencing technical difficulties during these events an exchange can become an island where pricing is isolated from other exchanges so there you go now you know the difference between exchange a and exchange b and why are they so different let's move on to the next question why does my trust wallet show a certain price, but when I try to sell in PancakeSwap, the price is way different? Here's the answer. Trust wallet is not pinned specifically to PancakeSwap pricing, so it looks at other exchanges. For many other coins, this is not much of an issue. But because of the unique 10% transaction tax inherent to SafeMoon as part of its tokenomics, there may be significant price fluctuations between exchanges as arbitrage trading is costly. In addition to that, don't forget that there's a 10% fee for selling. So, say for example, that your SafeMoon value in Trust Wallet shows $1,300 for your entire bag, but in reality, the Pancake Swap Exchange value is lagging behind a bit. So, the value of your bag on Pancake Swap is actually $1,000. When you sell, you're going to receive $900, 1000 less the 10% tax. This effect is exaggerated if there are paid price movements or liquidity problems as it takes some time for arbitrage traders to move their money between exchanges. Here's a good analogy. Milk is a different price at every store. The one you buy at is the one that's real. Next question, what is the difference between BNB and BSC? 
The Binance ecosystem runs on two parallel blockchains. The first one is BNB, known as the Binance chain, and the second is the BSC or the Binance Smart Chain. BNB and BSC can be swapped one to one for a small fee. BSC enables smart contracts that can power the unique tokenomics of SafeMoon. Next question. How can or how come when I try to purchase BNB or BSC through my trust wallet, it says not available? Here's the answer. Trust Wallet's payment processor, Simplex, often has trouble with processing BNB transactions. This can occur when there's liquidity issues with BNB. So if Binance is having issues or if the crypto gods are grumpy, when this happens, you cannot purchase through Trust Wallet. You will either need to wait for Simplex to get their act together or you will have to purchase BNB elsewhere and transfer it over to Trust Wallet. Next question. On PancakeSwap, why am I getting an error when trying to swap? Here's the answer. Set the slippage amount between 11% to 12% and then try again. If that doesn't work, add a 1 to the end of the safe moon number on pancake swap so for example if you are swapping one nine zero 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 safe moon and are getting an error change it to you know just add another one to the end and it should go through seems to be an issue with pancake swap that is unavoidable on the safe moon team side and if you're getting an unsupported chain id error make sure you're on the Binance Network top left or the top right corner. Check the settings. Next question. How do reflections work on BitMart Exchange? For now, BitMart would take daily snapshots of users' SafeMoon transactions and distribute monthly. So distributions will be compared before the 10th of each month. So have some patience, guys. Next question. I have BNB in Trust Wallet, so why does Pancake show zero when I try to swap? Here's the answer. You need to make sure that you have BSC or Binance Smart Chain instead of BNB when you try to swap for SafeMoon. Trust Wallet allows for you to swap BNB to BSC one to one ratio for a small fee. Here's some additional or addressing concerns by the SafeMoon team. What are the whales or who are the whales? Who owns the wallet? One of the main purposes of cryptocurrencies, of course, we understand is to provide anonymity. We know that very little about the person who owns the larger or smaller wallets because it's not our business nor it is our concern. We have no control over what the wallet owner does with the tokens in their possession. Let's continue. What is the SafeMoon protocol deployer's address? Well, this is the SafeMoon's dev personal wallet where he had purchased tokens, just like everyone else during the DX Fair launch. The tokens are being used for funding several different aspects of SafeMoon marketing, operations, development, community events, etc. All of the manual burns have been done from this address out of his own personal funds. No personal payouts have occurred from this address. They are being used to expand the business and further progress the token community. Let's continue with the next question regarding addressing concerns. Why did this long hashtag receive 777 trillion from the deployer address and why does it send funds to PancakeSwap? Where's the answer? This address is the liquidity wallet bound by the contract. So in terms of cryptocurrencies, liquidity is the ability of a coin to be easily converted into cash or other coins. Liquidity is important for all tradable assets including cryptocurrencies. That's according to Google. So the funds here are for the sole purpose of providing liquidity for pancake swap. Let's take a look at the next question that addresses some of the concerns. So who is this hashtag that you see here, or the hash rather, and why 
do they keep selling the tokens to manipulate the price so the wallet is question is owned by the community member Farrell. he purchased during the pre-sale and the tokens then were not sent via pancake swap during that time this is simply an early investor selling down his position having huddled through the meteoric rise in price this holder burned trillions of his tokens early on in the project as evidenced by the SafeMoon Twitter account. Let's take a look at the next question regarding addressing concerns. The question is, why are you asking for the community to assist with funding when you have the deployer wallet? Here's the answer. We do not have the means to front all of the money for everything that is needed for this project. It is simply too large of a project for us to be able to afford to fund everything that we all want to see happen. In no way, shape, or form is anyone obligated to donate towards the community fundraisers. It is completely optional to you whether or not you want to help and contribute towards paying for these things that we raise money for. Believe it or not, we have an operating budget that must be kept in order to maintain the longevity of the project. Next question. What's happening with Whitebit Exchange? What's happening with you know, Insert Exchange here? Well, we cannot answer that we're bound under the non-disclosure agreement. When we have the information for you, we'll make an announcement. Well, we know already that Whitebit is already an active exchange and SafeMoon is actively trading at this point in time including Bitmark, Hotbit, Keta.io, ZBG, all these exchanges are live with SafeMoon. Next question, what are these other tokens with Safe in the name? We have zero affiliation with any of these. The only token we are part of is SafeMoon. Let's take a look at the next question, number eight. What about all of these other addresses? that got coins from SafeMoon's Deploy Wallet. The tokens that were purchased during the pre-sale through DX sale were not sent via PancakeSwap during the time. They came out of the protocol wallet. They were not given to them for free. They were purchased as part of the fair launch. Next question. Why is the burn address not getting any transactions? And you see the address right here is the burn address. It is actively receiving the burn tokens. The token reflections happens inside of the contract, so there are no transaction hashes posted. And of course, question number 10, contract ownership. What is contract ownership? Here's the answer. We're treading a fine line here. One, one hand, or on one hand, we could have locked ourselves out of the contract and LP totally, which still may be possible in the future. On the other hand, we can keep the contract in our custody and utilize the functions of that to be able to ap applicate these functions to benefit the community instead of harming them. There are some, of course, fear, uncertainty, doubt, or FUD going around in most recent weeks, some by other clones of the smart contract that we're using, which targets us as having the ability of a rug pull. Let's take a deeper look at these attacks first we have taken serious steps towards mitigating the risk of security initially starting with a fair launch hosted on dxl lp being immediately locked out of the gate bringing in a real team with real people who offered to dox themselves and put their public credibility on the line registering an entity which is safemoon llc registered in provo utah right locking the second LP, third, fourth, and the list goes on. We have also already publicly expressed our goals and intentions of why we remain open towards keeping the contract in our custody due to the fluctuations or the functions rather of it allowing us greater strategic play down the timeline and keeps the contract from dropping the price on itself after achieving a low token count such as the fair moon war and rugs dilemma on um, or in other words we aren't just stuck with a smart contract that is limited to only trading on pancake swap while that may be fine initially we certainly have the vision to expand beyond those boundaries these are the boundaries that currently exist for many other developer teams that tout themselves as having an edge over us 
So in summary, we're not short-sighted to the limitations as being a finally or being a finality. We believe that this smart contract can outperform its competition for reasons that we've exclusively offered to the community. And what's our edge? The perfect harmony between fair launch, public team, and responsible contract utilization. This was the birth of Safe Moon. Perfect. I hope all these frequently asked questions help clarify most of the questions that you already have. And of course, there may be other questions. That is why keep in mind that InvestDesk, which is your number one channel for cryptocurrency research, daily news updates and forecasts, has invited Chief Technology Officer Thomas Papa Smith right here on InvestDesk in a live event so Thomas can answer additional questions that you may have regarding SafeMoon or other areas within the SafeMoon protocol. Be sure to mark your calendar. This is going to be on Sunday, May 2nd, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please navigate to the community tab of this very own channel, of your very own channel, and post your questions. I will be creating a whole list of all the questions before our live event with the CTO of SafeMoon. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, like, comment, and subscribe. I would certainly appreciate it. And with this, I will see you in the next video.